So you want to be a missionary and you're wondering, asking yourself, what does it take to become a missionary? And so uh, this is what I want to share with you. I want to share with you the different steps that it takes to become a missionary. My name's David. My wife and I were missionaries in the Philippines with New Tribes Mission, which is now Ethnos 360, um, from 91 to 2016, so about 25 years. And we were in a tribe as church planters. And I've been looking on the net, wanting to say, wanting to figure out, okay, um, does it, do they have information on the net as to the steps it takes to become a missionary? And I didn't see anything that was real clear, so I thought I would share. So... There's two kinds of missionaries loosely. One would be a supporting ministry, and one is a teaching ministry. Now, we're talking about missionaries cross-culture. Um, a supporting ministry is someone who is doing everything they can to help the person in teaching ministry to do their job. A supporting ministry and a teaching ministry will probably overlap in a, a lot of countries, but if you are in a, say, a, a country that doesn't have a lot of resources, a supporting ministry may, may um, be a full-time ministry, such as taking care of government um, paperwork, such as doing, say, the books, um, such as uh, being a, a pilot or maybe a buyer or things like that. And so that would be a supporting ministry. The pipeline or the steps you would take to be, be Get into supporting ministry is going to be a whole lot different than what it would be to, um, it's going to be much shorter than to get into a teaching ministry. So to get into a supporting ministry, so here's the thing that you want to say, see, look, you're going to want to find a home church and they're going to be partnering with you in your ministry. Um, they will be your main supporting church. You will answer to them ultimately. Uh, to, in your ministry and in your, your spiritual walk. Um, so you need to find a home church, get involved with the home church, get the church behind you, the leadership, the pastors, the elders, all that behind you so that you can do your work overseas, knowing that there's somebody back in your home country that's going to be partnering with you. Second thing, <laughs> or then another thing that you're going to have to do once you be, get a home church is you're going to need to find a mission organization. Now, why find a mission organization? Well, look, you need a mission organization to help you in a lot of different ways. Um, a mission organization is going to be the ones that will tell you where do you get your training. They're going to help you with your paperwork, like your visas uh, to get into particular countries. They're going to be the ones that will take care of your finances. When people support you, uh, they're the ones that goes through them to... Um, to um, get to you, get your cash to you in another country. Um, so you're going to want to join a mission organization. I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that later. The mission organization for a supporting ministry, they might require you to get Bible training. They might not. It depends on what particular ministry you're going to have. You should know your Bible, right? If you're, if you're going to be a missionary, you would certainly want to say you know your Bible. The other thing you uh, might be required of you is to get some culture and language acquisition learning or training. Um, you might, or probably as a supporting ministry, will not be working full-time in a, another language. You might. It depends on your particular job in that country. Uh, so they might ask you to get some um, CLA training uh, to get to learn how to learn a language and how to learn a culture so that when you get to the field, you got tools to get going and being able to learn another language and culture. Next, another step you're going to do is raise support. You're going to have to raise support, get churches and individuals behind you, financially support you, prayer support, so that you can get overseas and be supported and not be stressed about money. Uh, so you're going to want to raise support. The mission or organization that you will go with will tell you what how much support they will expect you to raise. They might set a hard number. Like they say, you can't go overseas unless you raise, say, 6,000 bucks a month or whatever the case may be. Okay, so you're going to have to raise support. In the meantime, because you're going overseas and going to be living, not just as a tourist, you're probably going to need to get paperwork started while you're in your home country. For example, they, they might ask for, you know, evidence of, your marriage, evidence of a degree, evidence of 
um, various things, uh, your marriage certificate, your birth certificates, and, and those of your children, um, things like this. You're going to have to get this paperwork started, maybe, maybe you know, uh, clearance of some sort. So to and you're going to have to start that while you're still in your home country. Then let's say you get all that done and you arrive in the country, you get overseas and you get set up. The, um, it's going to take some time to get set up because you're going to need to buy things like, you know, furniture and um, things that you're not going to bring from the, uh, your home country because it's it's basically unreasonable to bring everything. So you're going to have to get yourself set up, find a place to live um, that when you get overseas, your uh, particular mission organization might ask you to spend some time learning the national language and culture. They might not. It depends on the pressing need of uh, your particular ministry, for example, a school teacher. So, and then you'll, you might spend several months up to a year in national language and culture. And then after that, they're going to um, ask you or get you going into your ministry. So it is possible depending on the pressing need of your particular ministry to from the time you join a mission organization to be starting a full-time ministry in a supporting ministry, it is possible to be doing that within a year. This It's going to depend a whole lot on how quickly you raise support and how and what your particular mission organization is going to requ require of you. All right, but I'm going to spend a little bit more time here talking about getting into a teaching ministry. And again, here, here are your steps. You got to get yourself a home church. They're going to be behind you. Um, you're going to get Bible training. There's going to be a requirement. Hopefully your home church has a requirement. They're going to expect you to meet a certain standard of Bible training before they allow you to step overseas into a full-time teaching ministry. You wouldn't want a pastor to come and pastor a church in your home country without having had some sort of Bible training, right? So why would it be different going overseas? The standards should be about the same, really. So they're going to expect you to get Bible training. Now, it might be a seminary. It might not be. That's, the point is you, you're going to need to get Bible training. And when you join a mission organization, they will probably tell you how much Bible they want you to have. Some mission organizations expect you to have a seminary degree. Most will have, expect you to have some sort of bi formal Bible training. So you, this, was, this will be an expectation of you. So you're going to need to get Bible training. So if you started right now and you don't have Bible training, well, you need to get start getting Bible training. You can find courses online. Um, you can talk to your pastors, your missionary uh, pastors, and um, see what they say. But you're going to need to get Bible training. You, you're going to get uh, CLA, culture language learning, um, acquisition, uh, how, to, how to go about learning that. You're going to get that, and you're going to join a mission organization. Now, the mission organization you join may say, okay, we want you to go study at this particular school or that particular school. Uh, or you might go, go directly into a into a school that teaches you how to learn culture and language, such as Radius International. They're a very, very good school. It takes about a year to go through their course. I know that Ethnos 360, formerly New Tribes Mission, used to have a CLA, or do used to have, still does have a, a school that teaches language and culture acquisition. What this does is it gives you tools so that when you get overseas, you can efficiently, a lot more efficiently and quickly learn another language. Learning another language is tough. It's very, very hard. And if you don't have all the tools, you might get overseas right away without learning how to learn a language and culture, but then it might double or triple the amount of time it takes you to learn the language and culture simply because you don't have the tools. So it's a really good idea to get a very, very good, uh, ve get very good training in learning culture and language. Um, to join the missionary organization, yes, you can decide to go overseas and be an independent missionary, not be involved with a mission organization. You can belong to a, a mission clearinghouse. They do have those. And all a mission clearinghouse does is it takes care of your money. 
that's it. And you, so you get overseas as a brand new missionary. You don't know anything about the country, anything about the culture. Well, there's quite a few different issues that um, you would run into because of that. First of all, mostly it's pretty difficult to get paperwork if your mission is not, is not um, recognized. If, you're, if your ministry is not recognized by the government, you're going to have a hard time getting a visa. So you're going to want to get um, involved or tied to somebody so that you can get a visa, right? Uh, so you want to join a mission organization for that. They're also going to hold you accountable. Accountability is really, really important, all right? I, we need to be accountable to each other. That's very, very scriptural. But who's going to hold you accountable to a certain language level and a certain culture level? Well, that's what the mission organization can do for you. They also take care of your money. Um, they help you get your visa work and paperwork while you're overseas. So you need to join a mission organization, one that you agree with in regards to um, in regards to their course doctrinal statement, um, their methodology, their philosophy on missions, all that sort of thing. But and we can talk about that at another time. <clears throat> so you get your CLA, you join a mission organization, then you're going to raise support, just like just like uh, the other one, just like a supporting ministry. Raising support is tough and it discourages a lot of people. And sometimes it takes years. Let me just say this much about raising support. It, it is very, very controversial. People have different views on raising support, but ultimately you're going to answer to God on how you raise support. And so you make sure that you're doing however you're going to go about raising support, that you are, you can do it with a clear conscience before God on how you're raising support. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, while you're raising support and probably as you're getting close to heading to the country that you're going to, you need to get the paperwork you, um, going so that you can get into the country. Um, and then once you arrive in that particular country, you're going to get um, assimilated. Uh, you got, you, you're going to you know, jump into culture shock. Uh, <laughs> you're going to learn very quickly that the country you're going to, they're not quite like the, your home country. They're going to think different. They're going to do things different. It, you, will, you will, if you've not been overseas very much, you will go through culture shock um, while you're there and you're, while you're getting assimilated, um, you're going to start, um, you need to get your paperwork going to get a visa. And then after that, you learn uh, the language. You're going to learn the national language and the culture. Now, that might be the language that you actually work in or ministry, have ministry in. That's great. But you're going to want a high standard of learning the language and culture. You want to be able to communicate truth that people understand. There's a big difference between speaking a language and communicating in the language. Communicating in the language is simply, is, is so different. I can speak a language. I can see, speak several languages. And if somebody says to me, okay, translate this statement. Uh, say the statement is, it's so quiet, I can hear a pin drop. And I, I can say that to, in, in a couple of languages, I can say that terminology. But it doesn't make sense to anybody. Because it's outside of their culture. It's an idiom. It's, it's not the way they would speak and think. So even though I can say it, because I don't know the way they think, I don't understand their worldview, um, I don't know their idioms, um, I'm going <laughs> to, so I, I need to learn how to communicate in another language. I need to learn how to communicate and, and understand how they view the world, how they view each other, how they view relationships, all this. So it, it, it's going to take a while to learn the national language and culture. And if that's what the language you're going to be teaching in, it's going to take quite a while. Okay. Even if you're really, really good, it's unlikely that you will be teaching within a year. It would really actually be pretty unlikely. Most people, I would say to get to a, a teaching level at a high standard, it's going to take you several years two to three to four years to get to a teaching level. 
to know how to use slang in their language, to know the idioms of their language, to, to make grammatical errors correctly in their language, kind of like ain't in English. That's a grammatical error, so to speak, and yet it communicates. Um, there's a whole lot of things in speaking a language that we don't think about. Well, when you're going into another language in another culture, there's going to be a lot in that language and you're going to start thinking about what is language like? How am I going to be teaching these things? So it's you have to have a very, very high standard. Now, if you're actually going to be working in another language besides the national language and, and um, then you, you're going to have to go then learn that language and that culture. And that would take you, again, maybe several two to three to four years. It probably depends on how close grammatically it is going to be to your national language. Because if, if it's relatively close to your national language, it might not take you quite that long to learn uh, the, the other language in the country, but it might be a long ways away. It depends. That's going to depend on the country, but it's going to take a lot of time. And so once you get to a level of language and culture, then you're going to start teaching. Realize it's probably going to take you somewhere if you st would to start your CLA training right now and joining a mission organization right now, start your CLA training right now at the quickest might take you four years before you're teaching in Bible teaching ministry. And it might take you up to six years. Depends how long it takes you to raise support. So I hope you understand. I hope you understand um, the steps it takes. It's a big job to be a missionary. And you want to be well prepared. And you want to go with all the tools. And you want to have people behind you in prayer and support. Um, you want to have a mission organization that's going to be a big help to you. And all these are a lot of steps, but to, to do the job very well, it's going to take some time. So I just want you to understand the different steps it's going to take to get into ministry.